Gut, <clears throat> with a little bit of friction, we will start. Um, there are a lot of latest performance optimization techniques in Angular 15 and 16, and as Jay already did a very nice uh, in-depth on NGRC, I will also use that a little bit in the talk. But first, let me introduce my, <clears throat> my demo example, the Movies app. The Angular Movies app has a little bit of history. There is the Aurora team. Uh, it was also mentioned before, and the Aurora team focuses on, in general, supporting other open source frameworks and tools to get better performance. This tool is led by Eddie Osmani, and Eddie Osmani asked uh, Minko. Minko is responsible for performance in the Angular team if he could uh, help him to get a version of Angular running. Uh, and how Destiny goes, he asked me to help him. And so my team and I were able to implement a performance optimization on that, on that app. We basically have that online. That's the Angular Movies repository. You can see it here. And it is a pretty non-trivial application. It has a lot of real life optimizations. And in this uh, presentation here, I want to show you a couple of those presentations, uh, optimizations that we applied. We went from 49 to 100 or close to 100, depending on where you <laughs> measure that, but in general, outstanding good, I would say. And here we have a small video that demonstrates how we did that in terms of a video strip. So you see a massive difference of seconds and the talk is about the most beneficial tricks, how you can get close to that. Let me quickly introduce myself. My name is Michael Latke. I'm trainer and consultant at Pushbased. Um, good evening, because this conference is mainly targeted in the US. For me, it is a little bit later here than for you. And I'm happy to have you. Let's right start in. And I want to take all the LCP improvements because those are extremely quick wins. And you can use them in V15 with the <clears throat> NG source. You can also uh, today with the backport use it in V13, but uh, in V16 landed something for SSR. So let's start to understand how uh, NGSRC and the SSR hydration improvements can help us. If we look at the LCP, we can break that down into four different phases. We can have the um, time to first byte, we have resource load delay, and we have the resource load timing at the very end. There is the browser render delay, in practice, very short. And with our two tools, we can basically improve uh, the white areas here. We can improve the time to first byte and the resource load delay dramatically. Let's start with SSR and LCP. So in version 16, we have a new way to <clears throat> basically turn on our uh, bro uh, browser side hydration, client side hydration. And this will heavily help us to impact LCP as well as CLS. We finally have non-destructive hydrations that works with signals and RxJS, whatever you use. And it also has a couple of really cool assertions built in. When we do that, we have to focus more on the time to first byte section. And here we see a opportunity. We could move the resource load delay on into the server side, render the application there and already served rendered HTML. This would dramatically and will dramatically improve the LCP. And as you can see here, the load time when we use server side rendering and transfer state is pretty reduced and if you use transfer state, also the gray boxes, the HTTP requests are not fired. <clears throat> In version 15, when we use that, and this is a recording from the Angular Movies app in the web page test application, we see this white box here before we had the pre-rendered version, then we have the white box and then we have a re-rendering, rebooting of Angular. And this is called destructive hydration. It basically deleted all the DOM nodes and it redraw the application. 
in version 16, we have this not anymore. We have really true DOM hydration of the existing DOM nodes. And as you can see, this not only removed that white part, this also moved the LCP quite a while to uh, closer to a very good score. Uh, if you want to also get rid of the server render delay, this is a very nice library here from our colleague Enea. He will also give a talk uh, in a couple of hours, I guess, about um, and this library here is NGX ISR, and it helps you to basically cache all those things and handle the cache delay and invalidation in a really nice way. You can also find the links here. Okay, so we covered the whole SSR optimizations. This is really an easy plug and play. You don't really have to do a lot. At least, at least my upgrade were really pleasant. Let's look at ng optimized image. You can start little, you can go far with the ng source. Um, here is just a quick overview. I don't want to go in too much detail. You can see that NGSRC lazy loads by default. You can prioritize a specific image, images with the priority input so that the fetch priority changes. It has um, automatic creation of source sets. This is extremely helpful, <clears throat> especially when you want to do performance optimizations. And it has a lot of nice assertions about pre-connect and require. So, the ng source thing covers a lot of things. It also is useful for the picture tag. And here we can have a quick overview of what of all those techniques are used and automatically implemented because it is really a nice set of improvements together with just one library or import here, the ng optimized image. The first one is we have basically <clears throat> nice assertions for pre-connect. Pre-connect is here to basically assure that we can build up the connection to a specific domain already when we start render the HTML. And later on, when we request, we don't need to run that connection. That is very helpful uh, in saving a couple of milliseconds of time. The second thing is lazy loading. So NG SRC lazy loads everything. We save a lot of resources here because everything that is not on the screen is also not saved. And it helps us with fetch priority. And fetch priority is basically here to give the requests the right priority, a high priority for the LCP, a low priority for all other off-screen images. And with this trick, you can make sure the right things is happen at first and then the, all the other things, just as a quick introduction. We also have the responsive images. With those things, you can target specific screen sizes and picture sizes. To, this will dramatically drop your bundle size if you do it right. And this was also presented in a previous talk, so I don't want to get into, into more detail here, but one thing. When you use that, it is not really easy to get the things right, to set the right sizes, to set the right loader and everything. So I sat down and after a long of fiddling, I came up with a debugging approach that basically helps you, oops, helps you to understand is the right thing happening in the browser? Do I have my right sets? Because there is little that helps you to understand if this is correct or not. And if it is not correct, you basically end up in a way like this here, where you fetch uh, two big sizes, right? In the, in the movie application, we only have six different sizes. And if you uh, set the wrong measure, then the wrong size gets loaded, and you overfetch a size and you load too much. And this is not really good for your performance. But it is very annoying to debug. So let me quickly show you in the network tab how I would run my debugging. And I jump to the movies app. And the first thing that I do is I will open my um, <clears throat> debugging window here. I open that up a little bit. This. 
and I switch to the network tab. I will delete everything here, unselect it quickly so that we have a fresh state. And here we see all our images and JavaScript files and everything that the browser loaded. So what I do first is I try to select only images and here I will get, as you can see, all those files listed as images. Uh, I can also select with this second cogwheel here, the use large image icon and I can close this again. And then we see that I, it is easier for me to understand which image is loaded here first. And then I can use the filter and I can say, please only give me images from my domain of the suggested ones. And here I have the image origin and I want to fetch priorities with high because I already prioritized um, this image here with a high priority. The last thing that is not so easy to do with all that stuff is the, <laughs> the source set. So there we enter. I only see the image that I want to see and I can uh, reduce my columns here to only get the name and the path. After that, I disable my caching just that I have always the newest ones and latest ones. And here I can later on, when I refresh, see only the most important ones. So now, um, with that done, I can open my is responsiveness um, view and I can click on manual size and scroll it to the very minimum. Like this, right? Beautiful. Yeah? Um, it always helps to check the uh, device pixel ratio box here so that you can switch in between pixel ratios. Uh, it helps a lot when you set all those different overloads, configurations for all that, the devices, the densities and everything. It is hard. It, it took me a long time, right? So therefore, I came up with that approach. So this is all preparation. And now I can start. Uh, I can start maybe basically by refreshing my page. And I see that I have here loaded my resource with a width. And this is, I see from the path with 150. And when I now slowly start to resize, we see new image sizes dropping in 185. I go more slowly, slowly, uh, 100, 342. And it would be interesting for which screen size, here I see the screen size 314, my image size is fetched. So I can hover here and I can see, aha, uh -huh, uh, the image rendered size is this big, and if I select that image in my elements tab that I can uh, see here, I can even hover over that image and see the current source used and the intrinsic size. And this is important to not overfetch. So as you can see a lot to watch, I go on, go on, and I have to look again when the next image size is fetched. I go here like bigger and other images are fetched and I have to double check that always over again and select and go here. So this is the manual process and I did a little bit more. I have my console here and if I clear that up and reset that. Um, so all of this was the setup. Now a little bit about automation. I have a small script and if I execute that script, I get asked for an image selector and I say from a div, give me the first image. And then when I execute that script and I wait a little bit, I see this small table here on the left. This small table shows me basically the device pixel ratio. My client width at the moment is 158 pixel what image source I used. And here, if I open up this log and I hover over it, I can even see quickly right next to the network tab what I do. If I resize slowly, you can see columns pop in. So at a new client width of 170, a new image was fetched with the intrinsic size of 154. Uh, you see this red border also here. And if I slowly go on, you see that 
the opacity slowly goes up and back again slowly goes up, this means that the image size that is provided is a little bit too small. Another visual benefit in this debugging tool and then I go on and I have everything that is visible here in the table. So this is how I debug all that stuff. This is not uh, the, the easiest part. The tools helps a lot to, to save time. Small sum up. If you do it correct, now you see the comparison, a dramatic impact, and this is how you do it. I guess a nice and little helper for this performance technique. In the end, from version 15 to the last RC with some improvements, you can see in the film strips really nice improvements by very, very little effort, very low hanging fruits. Here, a link to my debugging tool. Um, if you like it, it is also in a repository in GitHub. You can start it and we go on. And with version 16, uh, enable blocking is a configuration that is default on, and that means it chunks the navigation from the rest of the Angular application. And if you look at the bootstrap phase, you have even more. You have Webpack, you have bootstrapping of Angular, app initializers, and the routing. And for every of those steps, you can inject a small scheduler, like I said, timeout, a, a um, uh, I don't know, um, any other scheduling method that is not a promise, and then you can chunk up those pieces. I said, timeout is the most easiest one. And if you do that, you can chunk up your bootstrap phase into all those little pieces. And this is also very nice to improve time to interactive and INP. There are zone flags and zone flags is a global way to optimize your Angular performance. Now that we slowly get options to run everything easier with zone, with zone less applications, we need a way to migrate there and zone flags is one nice trick. You can see heavy impact. I don't want to talk too much about it. I uh, recently wrote a blog post, a three blog, part blog post. This is part one. If you want to read up how to set up Zoneflex and where you can benefit there the most. You can also go zone less, but only module based at the moment. The recent releases does not enable us or allow us to go with a standalone, fully standalone application zone less. But not a big deal. We can just do the last wrapper as a module and the rest is, rest is fully standalone. We also have a lot of performance improvements in RX Angular. We shipped this beautiful set of directives, let RX4, RX if, the push pipe, a very new one, the virtual scrolling and unpatch to really have the way to either improve the performance and also go partially zoneless. What we do as a performance benefit is we chunk those big things. When you interact with the page, you render the new list. The, those blocking tasks we chunk up in small tasks, and this will bring uh, a very nice INP. The last uh, but not least for the RX Angular directives, you can also prioritize them. You can have a set of prioritizations that work like this. You schedule everything, you prioritize it, and then you execute it. And you have a set of helpers. You can say everything that is outside of the pixel area here, an HTTP request, the background thing has low priority. And everything that is with a mouse interaction, for example, has a very high priority. Everything else is in the middle. You can really control what things should render first, right? And this can bring really nice improvements uh, in performance. A last one, a recent release, a new thing, virtual scrolling is on the market uh, in a new flavor. This slideshow here demonstrates the amazing efforts uh, our colleagues from, uh, colleague from RX Angular, Julian, shipped recently a new version of Virtual 4. It is dramatically better than the current approach that the RX Angular CDK has. And as you can see here in comparison, it looks beautiful. Um, it's in experimental. There are a couple of features left, so that is really uh, amazing. But test it out, we already got a couple of very nice feedbacks. 
Here is the link. If you want to do that, download it, try it out. It is online now. And that's it. We went from 49 to 99 or 100, depending on the devices and everything. Um, we can now with Angular compare easily with the rest of the applications. As you can see here, we are a leading uh, force in performance. We uh, did a couple of things. We learned new hydration in SSR, how to debug SRC set, chunking the bootstrap phase. We can use zone flex with these articles. We even go zone less, but with a small exceptions. And you know, this new virtual scrolling now. This is very good news. Uh, other good news are we are funded. The RX Angular team is funded by the Chrome funding. Um, pot uh, with a 5k dollar so we will ship a lot of cool features in the future and maintain it this is the link give us a shout out star us on github and thanks for your time uh, always great to talk to you and goodbye good evening <laughs>